Texas A&M is an SEC contender. Let's talk about why. Number one, the new head coach, Mike Elko. Why? He's got this team winning the games that they are supposed to win. Yes, I understand they were favored versus Notre Dame, and that was a tough loss, but the offense just wasn't ready to compete against one of the top defenses in college football. Connor Wegman did not look good at all. I think he passed for like 100 yards versus Notre Dame. And all that being said, the Texas A&M defense is what is stepping up to play. Let's talk about that. They're 18th in college football in points per game. They're seventh best in third down conversion percentage. And there's two players I want to talk about. Number one, Will Lee, a defensive back for A&M. He is first in the country in pass deflections. He's been elite at what he does. He can clamp up anybody on the field at any position in the wide receiver group, whether that's way out wide, running on a go route, in the slot, running a quick slant, or otherwise running a drag route or finding a screen. It doesn't matter. He's done a great job. The second guy I want to talk about is probably the number one most impactful transfer portal guy, Nick Scorton. This guy came from, I think, Purdue. He had 10 sacks last year, and he was an absolute menace in the backfield, and that's exactly what he's doing right now. He's fourth in the country in tackles for loss. He's got 10 of those, and he has four and a half sacks, which is top 25. Absolutely incredible play from him and this Texas A&M defense. Mike Elko did a phenomenal job pulling these guys in from the portal. Just absolutely outstanding work and this is why Texas A&M is at where it's at. They had a great game versus Florida. They beat the dog out of Missouri on Saturday and absolutely clamped up that offense who I think had scored 20 or 30 points a game in the last like 10 or so games. So incredible, incredible work from Texas A&M's defense. Now the offense, Connor Wegman got injured. He injured his shoulder and was out for a few games. Marcel Reed, a redshirt freshman, came in and did a pretty damn good job. Now this guy's not an elite passer just yet. He's pretty young, but he can do work on the ground and he can make the plays that need to be made. He got A&M off to a four and one start. He looked really good in the Florida game at Florida, which was very impressive. But now Wegman has returned, and he looked great in his game back versus Missouri. 18 for 22, 276 yards, phenomenal stuff. But the thing that's really translated game in and game out was the run game for Texas A&M. As a team, they're 14th in the country in rushing yards per game. They have a 100% success rate in scoring a touchdown in the red zone, which is obviously first in the country. And then on top of that, their running back, Le'Veon Moss, has been the ultimate playmaker for this team. He's seventh in the country in rushing yards, and I think that Texas A&M looks like one of the better teams in the SEC. Now, looking at their schedule, they have at Mississippi State, home versus LSU, at South Carolina, home for New Mexico State, at Auburn, and we'll get to their last game in just a minute. Those games all are very winnable, especially Mississippi State, South Carolina, New Mexico, and Auburn. The benefit of the LSU game is LSU's defense has struggled, and they're coming into Kyle Allen Stadium. Very tough place to play. A&M has a phenomenal record there. They beat the number one team in the country unranked a few years ago with Jimbo Fisher. They beat Alabama in 2021. This is just, that's a tough place to play. And I think Texas A&M can win out there and be undefeated in conference play, which is so unbelievably important for their last game. Texas is coming in to Kyle Allen Stadium in College Station to face off in the return of the Lone Star Showdown. This was a phenomenal rivalry for decades. A&M and Texas specifically, they used to play Thanksgiving night on Thursday of Rivalry Week. Oh, what a great game. After your last meal uh, of ham and turkey and potatoes and deviled eggs and, and green beans and uh, sweet potato casserole and all that other stuff, you got to go watch Texas and Texas A&M square off in one of the best rivalries in college footballs. It's back. And it's going to be the last game of the season. And I definitely think that Texas could be easily undefeated coming into this game. And Texas A&M 
with one loss, could be undefeated in conference play at 7-0. And to me, the birth of the SEC championship is on the line there. College football playoff implications are on the line there. The fact that Mike Elko is in this spot already is absolutely incredible. To me, he has coach of the year candidate. What has happened with this AM team over the last two years with like 50 plus transfers leaving and a bunch of transfers coming in, the fact that they were able to put it together so quickly is unreal to me. Now, yes, they've had an easier SEC schedule. They don't have to play Alabama. They don't have to play Georgia. They don't have to play Ole Miss. I get it, but SEC play is is hard. I mean, look, Alabama just lost to Vanderbilt. Tennessee just lost to Arkansas. This stuff happens. Texas A&M beat Arkansas. Texas A&M is probably going to win the rest of their games heading up to this Texas game, and that game versus Texas is going to be Fireworks, absolute fireworks. Both of these guys or both of these teams will be in the top 10. It's going to be where college game day is probably maybe outside of, I don't know. I think I think that's going to be where college game day is for the last week of the season. A&M has a chance to get to the SEC championship and the college football playoffs in Mike Elko's first year. Something that Jimbo Fisher hasn't done or didn't do and never even came close to. So all that being said, a m is an SEC contender. I'm really proud of what they've done so far. They've got an easier schedule heading out into the last half of the season. They can do it. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.